Hello and welcome to this short introduction to Hawaiki Kia 3.0. If you're already familiar with Hawaiki Kia, then this is the video for you. But if you're new to it, then follow the link on screen now for a tutorial that explains things in a lot more detail. When we launched Hawaiki Kia 2, we told you it was one of the best Kias you could buy at any price. But with Hawaiki Kia 3, we've significantly improved on that. Not only have we made it even simpler to use, We've also made it even more powerful and flexible, and we've added a whole load of great new features, so we think you're really going to like the result. We're going to be looking at HK3 in Final Cut Pro 10, but if you're a user of Apple Motion or Adobe After Effects or Premiere on the Mac, the operation is essentially the same in each of the host applications. So you can find Hawaii Kia in your effects browser, and as before, there are two versions, one for blue and the other for green. And of course, it's the green module that we'll be using here. The first thing I wanted to point out are the changes that we've made to the view system. You'll see that there are now two drop down menus which are both permanently in view, and there's this very handy swap button which enables us to very quickly swap between the two of them. And as before, if we hit the dual view button, we can see the two menu options side by side. So let's dive in and key this shot. The first thing I'm going to do is hit the swap button to display the Luma map view. This view tells me exactly which control I need to grab in order to clear the background. And it's one of several new powerful diagnostic tools that we've added to help take the guesswork out of getting a great looking mat. In the past, you'd have grabbed the screen density slider and cleared the backing using that, but with this new method, we'd like you to use either the high or the low density slider instead. And the Luma map is going to tell you exactly which one to go for. In this case, the green screen backing is showing up as red, which means we need to grab the high density slider. If it had been blue, we would have needed to go for the low density control. So now we know which control to use, we can switch to the analysis view by hitting its quick view button. Now you'll notice that in addition to the orange areas that we had before, we've also got these yellow areas, and those are pixels that are just about to become semi-transparent, but are still opaque. So now all we need to do is adjust the high density control until the backing goes black. A quick tip if you're in Final Cut Pro 10 or Motion is to hold down the Alt or Option key while scrubbing in the number field, or if you're in one of the Adobe hosts, then hold down the Command key while dragging the slider. In both cases, that will gear down the adjustment and make it easy to get just the right value without overcorrecting. And that's very important if you want a great looking key. Finally, all we need to do is grab the foreground fill and increase the value till we've got our foreground areas solid orange or yellow. Foreground fill is really just the control that used to be called matte density. And that's it. Here's the finished result. A perfect key with no guesswork. So let's try another shot. This time it's a blue screen, so I've added the blue screen module and we'll take a look at the Luma map again to get started. And as you can see, we've got blue rather than red in the backing area. And you'll remember that means we need to go for the low density slider this time. So let's switch back to the analysis view and adjust our low density until the backing goes black. And with a very small tweak to the foreground fill, we're good to go. So I hope you can start to see how easy it is to work with the Luma map and analysis views. It's all about taking away the uncertainty and guiding you towards a quick, easy and great looking result. By targeting specific luminance values within the backing, HK3 is allowing you to pull a much better and more accurate key. OK, it's time to get a bit more advanced. Here's a shot from the open source movie Tears of Steel. Again, Luma Map tells us that we need to go for high density. So let's switch to analysis and make that adjustment. Now I've got to around halfway up the slider, but I haven't cleared this area down here. So I'm going to show you another trick. I'm going to grab the high knee slider just beneath it here and very slightly reduce that value. 
And what that does is it lowers the threshold for the high density and lets us get at those areas that are slightly less bright. If we switch to the dual view and look at the Luma map over on the right here, we can see how that works in practice. Adjusting the knee evens out that slightly darker area of the backing. You'll see we also have a knee slider for the low density and that does the same thing for the low values. So if we just make our usual adjustment to the foreground fill, you'll notice that everything is good apart from the barrel of the gun here, where there's a lot of reflected green coming off the backing. Now there are lots of different ways we could approach this, but this gives me the opportunity to introduce you to pre-qualify, one of the unique and incredibly powerful features that we've added to HK3. Pre-qualify is in a group of its own here. What pre-qualify allows us to do is to adjust the balance of the red, green and blue channels independently in both the background and the foreground. And that's a really useful thing to be able to do. The first thing I want to do here is switch over to the RGB max view so we can assess what's happening with our gun barrel. And this view tells us which channel is dominant for every single pixel in our image. In this instance, the green channel is dominant here on the gun barrel and that's what's causing the problem. So let's switch to dual view and put our analysis view over on the left and the RGB max view over on the right and let's look at how we can adjust this. Obviously we could reduce the foreground green so let's try that. And you'll see it's turning the gun barrel blue here on the right and it's solidified the gun barrel on the left in the analysis view. So now we just need to reduce the background green to clean up the background. Another strategy would be to increase the foreground blue, so let's try that. And again we just need to reduce the background blue to compensate. But perhaps the best option would be simply to increase the foreground red. And as you can see that does the job on its own without us having to compensate for the background. What's happening here can best be explained if we switch over to the pre-qualify view and this shows us a map of the pre-qualified background and foreground areas. Everything that's yellow will be considered foreground and everything that's purple will be treated as background. As you'll see we've got some pretty sophisticated controls for adjusting this map so for example we can increase the background separation value and you can see that this intermediate area here now becomes background only, which means we can really fine tune the operation. To find out more, go to the comments and follow the link to the manual, which you can also access from within the plugin by clicking on this HK3 banner just here. I'd just like to say a quick word about what we've done with auto balance, and we can see the effect of this by looking at this well-known shot from Hollywood camera work. Without touching anything else, I want us to have a look at the analysis view for this shot. So we've moved auto balance down here into the pre-qualify group. And you'll see that as I reduce the value, we're starting to see a lot more detail in the hair. We don't want to go too far as we'll start to make it harder to key out the background, but I think you can see the advantage of this option. What we've done with Hawaii here is calibrate the controls so that they're optimized for the most common types of green screen shoot, but in this case we have very dark hair against a well saturated and well lit backing, and that's why we need to use auto balance to compensate. Now when we adjust the high density we're getting a very good result indeed. So auto balance is good for situations like this where we've got dark foreground against a well lit background. But at the other end of the scale, it's also useful for when you're dealing with a dim or unsaturated background. And in that case, instead of reducing the value, you'll increase it. I should also point out here that we've introduced two new auto options, namely Auto Target and Auto Edge. And you can find out more about these in the manual. So at this point, we should talk about the despill features in HK3. Now of course what despill is doing is taking away green or blue contamination from the foreground image. 
And because when you reduce the value of one channel, the overall luminance is reduced, what HK3 automatically does is to match the luminance of the original image before it was despilled. Now, if your new background has roughly the same luminance as your original green screen backing, that will be exactly what you need. And in fact, that's what we've got with this shot. However, there will be times when you're wanting to add a darker or a lighter background, and then you'll want to override this default behavior. So you can just grab the auto luminance slider and adjust the result as necessary. But you can also use the brightness control for even more extreme adjustments. For Hawaii Kia 3, not only have we given you more control over the auto process, but we've also updated the spill map view, so it's much more obvious which areas of your foreground are being despilled. So where the foreground is cyan, there's no spill being removed. But the more pink there is, the more intense the despill process. We've also updated the display algorithm, so it's much more obvious where spill is being removed from darker areas. So as before, the spill map view will update as you make changes to the amount, the spill map depth, and the balance. Not only that, but we've also created a whole new view called the spill map overlay view, which is simply your final key with the spill map overlaid as a grid. And this allows you to see exactly which areas are being dispilled in the context of the final key. So another really useful diagnostic tool that again helps to take away a lot of the guesswork. The next feature we'll come to is Edge. And here, as you know, Hawaii Kia gives you a whole bunch of advanced compositing features that you simply won't find in any other Kia. What we've done with HK3 is to move both transparency and blur into the Edge section. And that means that if you're using Gradient Qualify, you can use these two features on different areas of your key independently. And we've also updated Lightwrap, so now we have an additional set of blend mode options, which include Screen, Add, Overlay, Soft Light, and Multiply. And we've also given you a new Background Blur slider that lets you control the amount of background blur. There are plenty more features that I won't have time to show you in depth, but I'd just like to point out that we've added a unique white balance option that uses Hawaii's state-of-the-art auto-grade technology to deliver outstanding results. So you can either white balance the input to the Kia only, or the final image, or both. And you can white balance using either a white pick or a skin tone pick, and both of these give great results. So in this case, I'm going to click on the color swatch, bring us up the color picker. I'm going to select this area of skin here and enable image. And you'll see we've got a much nicer result. So if your footage has a pronounced color cast, it can sometimes interfere with pulling a good mat. So it's very useful to have this feature to help with the process and or improve the look of your final composite. And one final feature that I'd like to mention before we finish and that's the on color view, which replaces the on black view from previous versions. Let's select that from the view menu and we'll skip down to the bottom of the inspector here and look for the on color swatch. And that lets us choose any color we want for the background. And the nice thing about this is that if we select this view for our final composite, this is what we're going to have in our rendered output which means we don't have to add an external layer of solid color, and we can just use this instead. Even better, we can turn on the Use Color option for both our Light Wrap and Edge Blend, and that's going to make for a much nicer composite against our chosen color. So there you go, that's just a really quick rundown of some of the main features of HK3. For lots more information, the manual has a detailed description of all the features. HK3 is a unique and incredibly powerful keying system that just keeps getting better and better. Hawaii Kia 3 is available exclusively through Effects Factory, and you can download a free trial version and try it out for yourself right now. Thanks very much indeed for watching.